Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Ah, two Chardonnays, two Chardonnay Viognier's, three countries. Let's dig in and see where we get to. Uh, first Chardonnay, uh, Chardonnay 2010 from Chapel Down uh, in Tenterden in Kent. Pure English Chardonnay made entirely without oak to showcase the freshness and vivacity. Is it just a marketing man gone mad or does it live up to its billing? Let's give it a whirl. First thing I notice, that, uh, it, well two things, first of all it's pale in colour, but it's pale and interesting. I stick my nose in and um, it, uh, sometimes you stick your nose in English wines and I had a sparkle from these recently I stuck my nose in and I thought oh it smells of just that little smoky elderflower under ripeness. Well I stick my nose in here and I think it smells of um, uh, other oaks burgundy actually, it smells of um, a lighter Macon almost rather, southern end of burgundy rather than uh, uh, the northern end. Um, yeah, it smells. It smells like it's, it's got those uh, bits of bruised apple, bit of baked apple too, and uh, a little bit of nutty undercurrent. It smells. It smells good. Well, if there's anything English about it, maybe it's that slight. Um, yeah, the acidity is fresh and juicy. Maybe more uh, bracing than uh, a macon, but certainly not one of those that you have as you wincing. And uh, um, I like it. I, I really do like it. Um, I'd like to say it's the best English Chardonnay I've, I've had, but uh, uh, the number of candidates uh, at which, at which it's, it's competing is, um, is pretty small. Uh, but certainly one of those wines, maybe people apologise for English wine and say, uh, this is interesting. Actually, this is genuinely good. Uh, and uh, I would I'd very happily drink quite a lot of this. Yes. Yes, please. Um, okay, next two are from Chile. Uh, so the first one is uh, Chardonnay, uh, 2009 Chardonnay from Leda, uh, and it's Santa Rita's. Um, the weird thing is Medal Real. I, I, I never quite know the uh, the pecking order for, for Santa Rita. Um, so this is Santa Rita Medal Real Gran Reserva Chardonnay 2009. All the names will ju only just about fit on the bottle, um, but um, what does Gran Reserva mean in this case? I don't know. Uh, it's, I think it's just one of those silly things that marketing people put on to uh, try and impress gullible wine buyers. Big difference between this and the, the, the one before, both in colour. I mean, this, is, this has got a, a, a very golden, uh, almost orangey tint. It, it, I'm just wondering if it's looking old before its time. Um, second, in terms of uh, intensity, this was all about bright and spring-like. This, um, uh, the, uh, the Santa Rita, uh, is really quite buxom and forward and uh, really quite old-fashioned. The weird thing is I, I think of Leda as, uh, as being where some of the more subtle Chilean Chardonnays come from. This is... Um, like a, yeah, like a slightly old-fashioned, big, rich, oily uh, fruit cocktail type of Chardonnay. Um, doesn't smell like it's going to be, uh, for me, as good a wine as the one before, but let's taste it and find out. It's a certain style of Chardonnay, very big, creamy, it's got this smokiness from the oak. Um, but for me, it doesn't have any finesse. It doesn't have any daintiness. It really is a, a bit of a, a bit of a bruiser for Chardonnays. And um, every so often you want a wine like that, but I was expecting more, I was expecting more freshness and, and life and grip. 14.5% alcohol also says to me that maybe, uh, yes, okay, if later is supposed to be cool climate, well, it's cool, if it's cool, why didn't you pick your grapes earlier? And uh, they'll say, oh, the flavours hadn't fully developed. Well, I don't want those tropical fruit flavours there. I want something that's a bit more bright and fresh. Uh, I think that's yesterday's Chardonnay. Uh, right, let's see whether we are on yesterday's Chardonnay Viognier. So still in Chile here, uh, Miguel Torres, same vintage, and uh, from Limery, um, which is fur actually further north than uh, uh, Leda, but um, is, uh, can in, is in places just as cool, thanks to Atlantic in uh, Pacific influence. But yeah, there's cool Leda and there's warm, warmer Leda. There's uh, Limery, there's very cool Limery, and there's quite warm. Um, Chardonnay 88%, Viognier 12%, Fermentado en Barrica, barrel fermented. Well, it smells like it's going to be a lighter, more delicate wine. Certainly it's paler in colour, uh, and I'm just wondering on the, uh, uh, on the Santa Rita one whether there was uh, uh, an edge of, um, not cork, but premature oxidation. It, it, its colour looked old before its time. Interesting, both of these wines, uh, if, I, if they were mine winery, I'd shove them under screw cap because uh, uh, both the areas for me, freshness is the thing, is the key. But here, I do get the freshness. But again, I'm just wondering whether 
in terms of cork character, uh, there is something about the cork that is dampening down the um, uh, the, the aromas here. If, they, if, if uh, you get those corks that uh, just strip off maybe the, the grace notes, if you want to call them, the, the top melody line. So you're getting 85% of the full wine, so it's still okay, but uh, not uh, quite as the winemaker intended. So I don't get any of those exotic Viognier characters coming through. I do get the freshness, I do get a bit of light apple flavour, but um, let's taste it and see. And some of the Viognier nuttiness does come through when you come to taste it. And um, it's also giving this a slight, a, a, slight, a slight heat in the mouth. I feel this warm, strangely, on the tip of my tongue rather than uh, anywhere else. A bit of vanilla um, and uh, the, the cashew character, uh, melon, lemon. Um, again, I, um, I, if I have a problem with it, it's a simple wine. Uh, it's it, it's certainly more in tune with today, I feel, than the, the way in which that bottle of the Medallarel was, was showing. But um, there's very little what I call life beyond fruit. I can see the fruit, I can see a bit of winemaking character, but in terms of the character of the vineyard, not getting too much of that coming through. Um, so reserving judgment. Interesting that they're on 2009 of this. I would have, we're in, in sort of, well, March 2012 here. I'm wondering whether they should be on uh, the at least a 2010 and maybe even 2011 vintage. Okay, final wine, um, which Chardonnay Viognier 2010. Uh, not in Chile now, but uh, in Australia. The Clare Valley with Wakefield, 80 acres Chardonnay Viognier. I find myself having a love-hate re relationship with Wakefield wines. Some of them I think are absolutely delicious. Uh, I remember the l last one I had was, um, yeah, the basic Cabernet Sauvignon was, uh, you, you just thought, oh, yeah. And uh, uh, this one I find on the slightly jelly side. Um, I Not genocide, jelly side. I, it, it, feel, it, it smells... Um, Yes, it's got that slight confection edge. Uh, I don't know, can't say I noticed too much again of the exotic Viognier character. It smells like it's going to be broad and peachy, but um, more in tune with what I can think of as a slightly early '90s Semillon Chardonnay blend than a uh, uh, 2010 Ch uh, Chardonnay Viognier blend. It's a decent outdoor, chill it down, br get a bag of prawns type of wine, but. Um, uh, and it, it's funny, it's got, it, it smells like it's going to be quite light, and then it, it has got quite a bit of weight and presence, but in terms of uh, uh, complexity, not really all that much. Decent enough. Um, it, one of those where I might even have a second glass, but I wouldn't go beyond there, and I wouldn't go out and rush, wouldn't rush out and buy a bottle. It's okay. And, um, but for me, I mean, I'm uh, surprised to find myself uh, saying this, but my favourite of those by a considerable margin was the English one, the Chapel Down, so bully to them. Uh, I'm going to go and sing the national anthem, but I'll say see you before I do that, because you haven't heard me singing. Bye. <laughs>